Can you hear me? Yeah. Right. Um, somewhere here. Right. Good afternoon. Welcome, welcome to my talk. Um, I'm Julian Yosh, and my talk is about Behemoth, which is um, a project I've started a few months ago. And it's all about doing large scale document processing on top of Hadoop. I'm sorry, I have to look at, at the main screen all the time because it's not working on my on my laptop. No mind. So uh, a few words about um, about myself. Um, I'm a consultant based in in Bristol, UK, and I, I specialize in text engineering, which covers very various things like uh, from web crawling, information retrieval, building search engines, um, doing natural language processing, which is my my original background, and more generally doing data mining. Um, one of the um, characteristics of, of Digital Pebble as a business is um, the, the very strong focus on open source and particularly on, on the Apache ecosystem. Um, so to give you an idea of the sort of resources that, that, that I tend to use, uh, so it's things like Lucene, Solar, um, Mahout for machine learning, Gate and UEMA for natural language processing. And I'm also, um, well, my degree of involvement varies from one project to another. So for some projects, I'm just a, a user. I do contribute to uh, other, other projects, and I'm a, a committer on actually two um, Apache projects, uh, Nudge and Tika. So now, if you don't mind, um, just have an idea of who you are as an audience so that I can you know, change my, my, my comments uh, during, the, during the talk. Um, so is there anyone doing natural language processing or text? OK, quite a few, probably a, a dozen. And uh, using UIMA, Gate, OpenNLP, whatever. OK, it's just down to six now. Right, not, not directly related. Who uses Hadoop in the room? OK, so it, it's more like. Uh, And are there any uh, NoSQL buffins in the room? <laughs> okay, good. Five, six again. And now, um, has anyone tried to use Hadoop for doing NLP related tasks? Okay, three, four. Okay, so the, the, this talk should be uh, of interest, I hope. Okay, so we have a um, um, double challenge when it comes to uh, doing. Um, and NLP is, well, the, the first one, I won't go into uh, great details about that because you've seen probably uh, dozens of slides about the, the amount of data available and this sort of big bang that we have of, of unstructured text available and, and which we need needs to be processed. So that, that's one challenge. The other one is that um, NLP is, is quite, tends to be quite, quite slow. Um, and it's due to um, well, all sorts of factors. Um, the fact that it, it can be get quite complex, and people tend to mix and, and match various resources. Um, so it's not, yeah, it's not particularly fast in general. So we, we have this double double issue here. Um, to um, well, you you'll find quite a, quite a few connections to um, some of the talks from from yesterday. So I'm bouncing on on the. Um, the, the the keynotes um, from from yesterday about you know, intelligence. So basically, having you know, things which are available, we, we can scale now and everything. And and then the last point was okay. Well, how do we project some intelligence and do do new things, do interesting things? So our, my talk is about doing things from the other way around. So I'll, I'll look at what things we have, what resources we have at the moment to do intelligent things, but how we can make that you know, scalable and, and easier to fit with other resources. Um, so NLP frameworks to th th that are commonly used for, for doing some intelligent things, so to speak. Um, there, there are two main ones. Uh, there, there are an awful lot of other resources that people people use, like OpenNLP and, and, and so on. But I'll focus just on, on these two, because um, I think, yeah, they're, they're the two main ones. So one is um, Apache UIMA, which is um, now a top-level project. It used to be in, uh, in incubation for some time. And the other one is Gate, which um, I happen to know quite well because uh, it's um, developed and, and maintained at uh, the University of Sheffield. I spent quite a few, uh, quite a few years working there. Um, and so there are quite a few differences between these two frameworks. I'll 
focus more on, on, on what they have in common. Um, they both provide you um, an implementation of, of pipelines of annotators, and an annotator is basically a little module which creates annotations. Um, and these annotations tend to be uh, well, are what you call standoff annotations. So basically, you have a piece of information attached to a position on the text. So you have a start and off of set um, sort of positions with the, with the annotation. And um, they come with collections of resources, so all sorts of things that people use, like tokenizer, part of speech taggers, when you put um, an attribute showing whether the, uh, a given token is a, a noun uh, or a verb or whatever. So the, there are all sorts of things that, that can be used with, it, with these frameworks. Uh, and they come with GUIs, um, communities of, of developers and users, probably gates are probably more, uh, a bit more active than the new EMA, and both are, are, are quite popular. So these um, NLP frameworks can, are, are used for doing all, all, sorts, all sorts of things, from um, typically named entity recognition. We'll have an example of that a bit later. So when you have um, a, a text and you identify um, locations, people, um, jobs, whatever. Uh, other things like summarization, text classification, um, something which is quite trendy at the moment, um, opinion mining, everybody's doing that for some reason. Um, and, and all that you can do with, with Gate or, or Uima, because as, as frameworks, they're not limited to, uh, to a, a given domain or to a given language, even though most of the resources that they provide um, are, are mostly for, for English, but there are other things um, available. Um, and when, when it comes to uh, adapting that to, uh, to a given domain or it's a matter of, of playing a bit with the existing resources or developing new ones if needs be. Um, and that's typically the sort of things that you know, I do in my business is you know, helping people to, um, to do things like this. That was my little sales pitch. Right, um, we'll have a quick demo at, at Gate, of Gate, sorry. Um, Quick look at it. Um, just to give you a, um, a better idea of the you know, the way it works and how it's organized and everything. Um, so that's the GUI. So what I'll do, I will load um, sort of a default application for Gate, which which is extremely simple. It does just some named entity recognition, but it's more of um, yeah, more of an example of, of how you can combine things and, and how they work together. Um, here we are. So now if we, this has created a, a pipeline, and we can see how these components are you know, placed in a, in a pipeline, and so they can be uh, parameters and everything. So here we have something fairly straightforward with um, a tokenizer, um, a gazetteer, which is um, simply a, a fancy name for a, a long list of entities that you know, we know something about. So, for instance, here we have a list of um, countries in, in mostly in French, um, and, and then you would, you know, the, the, the gazetteer will look at instances of, of these entities and mark them with annotations in the uh, in the original text, um, and. Um, yeah, a uh, sentence splitter basically yeah, cuts the text into sentences, part of speech tagger, and um, transducer. So it's basically a little rule system which um, allows us to create new new annotations because it, well, it's all about generating annotations. So, so this will reuse existing annotations and, and just you know, using very simple contextual rules, create new ones. So that's the, the basic toolkit. Um, now I'm gonna load a document. Here we are, so from the recent news. And um, put that in the corpus. And now we can run any on this, um, on the corpus.
Oh ah, yeah, something uh, I forgot to mention. We um, can also keep the original markup. So this document was HTML, so we converted all the um, the original HTML tags into um, into um, annotations. So now, if we look at uh, say person. Okay, so let's find the one. So we have persons, organizations, locations. Anyway, so yeah, that's basically uh, what it does. So um, again, that's just an example. Um, quality of the annotation is not necessarily great, um, but it's just to illustrate the you know what people tend to um, how people tend to combine resources to create an application that suits their their needs. Um, so now, I'll go back to the presentation. Okay, imagine we, we've built a, a nice application. It does exactly what we want. It generates the annotations that we, we need for um, our application. But then the problem is, okay, how do I <laughs> use that on my large, co large corpus? And at the moment, the, uh, the, uh, the answer depends on, on the framework that you're considering. For, for Gate, there is a service called Gate Cloud, but um, it's, it's not open source and it's... Uh, with limited access, I, access is done by my uh, former colleagues at, at Sheffield. Um, and apart from that, you, you know, it's do it yourself. <laughs> you're, you're done to uh, implementing it yourself. Um, there are more things for for UEMA. There is um, a resource called UEMA AS. I think it stands for asynchronous something. Um, and and here is the well the the big picture which I, I nicked from the the documentation. I haven't used UEMA AS myself, so if I uh, I might say things which are a bit inaccurate, but I think I'm, uh, I'm going to write on, on the big picture. Um, and basically, yeah, it's a, a, um, a queue with a manager, and then the, so the, we have clients sending requests to the queue, and, and these requests are, are processed by uh, a number of um, services which are running uh, on, on several machines. So that, that's great. Um, probably has low latency. Uh, so if you have just uh, a few documents to process, then you send them to the to the queue, and they would probably be um, you know, done in, in quite rapidly and sent back. Um, but you know, the, the, I'm not entirely sure about the, the throughput you could achieve with that, in particular because of the um, you know, there's no data locality, so you, you can't you know you're not, you're not sure that um, uh, the data will be processed on on the same. Uh, on the same machines, so you have quite a lot of transfers of transfer of data coming to and from the the, the, the processor. Um, when it comes to uh, storing and and replicating the, the the content in order not to uh, to lose it, well then you 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 have to do that yourself, probably on the client side. Um, another thing which is probably not not straightforward is the the configuration. So you, you need to uh, configure each and every node in a Possibly in a different way, um, and and one point which is probably the most important is uh, what I, I call the post-processing scala scalability. I'm not sure it's the <laughs> a very accurate term, but never mind. And and the idea is that often you um, you, you would annotate documents, um, but it's not the the end of of uh, of it all. You you want to 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 aggregate the information coming or well, the annotations coming from these documents. Um, to do, for instance, things like, um, well, imagine you want to, to bootstrap an ontology, so you find terms which are interesting, you have some context for these terms, and you want to find similarities between them. So you would annotate the documents with UEMA or GATE, um, but, but then doing the, all the, the post-processing of finding the similarities and doing something with the annotations, well, you, you, you know, with UEMS, you, again, you would have to do that yourself. Um, and that would not necessarily, you know, not necessarily scale. So DIY again. Ta -da! <laughs> and that's <laughs> the sort of problems that Behemoth um, aims at, aims at, um, if not solving, at least helping with. Um, so um, yeah, that's Behemoth. Uh, he's. Um, I, I'm not really versed in demonology. I don't know about you, but I think he's um, the one in charge of organizing the um, the parties for for Satan. So. Basically, the guy in charge of the, the booze, the girls, and, and, and the food. Um, so, yeah, quite a nasty looking animal, unlike the little cutie from, from Hadoop. Um, so, Behemoth as a project is something that um, I've started a, a few months ago. 
Um, and yeah, it's basically a platform for la large scale document processing um, based on, on Hadoop. And it lives on, currently lives on Google Code and it's under um, an Apache license. Um, what it does is that it helps to, um, to deploy UEMA or Gate applications on a, on a Hadoop cluster. Um, and, and also provides a um, sort of standoff based document implementations with you know, the same type of annotations that we've seen earlier, but you know, in, a, in a very neutral way. I will come back to, the, to that a bit later. It also gives us um, adapters for um, common input formats. Um, and um, yeah, the, one of the, the, the aims of Behemoth is more to provide all that but also to give, to give a space for, for people to build applications on, on top of that and sharing the code and, and, and reusing things. Um, it uses the, um, the old um, Hadoop API, so you can get it to run on, on pretty much any, any version uh, of, um, of Hadoop. Um, it might not necessarily be the case for, for, for much longer, but uh, yeah, some people were interested in, in getting it to work on um, Elastic, Elastic MapReduce, which I think still uses um, 18.3 or something. Um, so that's why it's still on based on the old um, old API. Right, um, the document implementation is extremely straightforward. So we have uh, you, for, for those who are into uh, MapReduce, recognize the writable <laughs> at the top. Um, so it, it's basically a URL with Possibly a content type. It's not it's not mandatory. Um, some text um, as a string. Again, it's, it's optional. The text can be null. No. Um, some content byte array again can be null. No. Why? Um, because we um, don't want, don't want, we don't really want to make assumptions as to what w people would use it for, and it doesn't have necessarily to, to doesn't have to process text documents. Could be um, images, videos, or, or whatever. Um, we then have a map writable containing metadata, um, which would be you know, not, not associated to a specific portion of the document, but valid across the whole document. And then we, we have um, a list of annotations with you know, the, this very simple representation for annotations with you know, a type start and um, relative to the, the text. Um, and, um, and then a, a map uh, of features which you know, we've got a constraint, you know, the, the, the key and values have to be strings. I'll come back to, to that later. Um, so that's, I don't know why I chose a document in French, it's not <laughs> necessarily very useful, but um, it's just to illustrate, you know, when you, when you run um, the, the text command of Hadoop fast, you know, to see what the, what the, the, the sequence file look, looks like, um, this is what you get, you get, um, URL, content type, et cetera, et cetera. And more importantly, the annotations at the bottom. All right, so why do we, why, why using Behemoth? Um, well, the um, uh, uh, um, straightforward reason is the, the configuration. So as assuming that you have a, a Hadoop cluster up and running, um, then apart from that, there's nothing to do with the, the slaves. I mean, everything is in the job file, all the, the resources required to, to process the, the data it's all in the job file, um, and, and the slaves are just normal. You, know, you can delete them and create new ones. Doesn't doesn't need anything specific. Um, there is a um, configuration object which allows you to um, specify, for instance, what annotations we want to keep from the underlying NLP components and and what features we want to keep, etc. Um, one of the main advantages is that we we automatically benefit from, from, from Hadoop and w everything it, you know, it brings, and that, that makes life m much easier. Um, so you know, people can focus on, on the NLP part, the, 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 the components, and, and how they, they, they want to use the annotations in the post-processing instead of you know, thinking about distributing the stuff and so on. Um, another aspect which is um, actually quite um, can be quite important is that um, it hides all the your let's say specificities of, of gate or UEMA and that, that sort of hides all the, the nasty stuff from the from the, the, the programmer so for instance there are one of the most common um, questions on the on the gate user list it's 
more or less every, the same all the time. It's uh, people running into memory problems because they haven't necessarily spotted how that you know, documents needs to be explicitly cleaned and everything. So you know, with Behemoth, well, it does that for you. It creates the documents for you, you know, for, for, for Gates. It's one less thing to worry about. Um, also, well, provide a, uh, provides a common ground bet between UEMA and Gates, so people could combine you know, existing resources with UEMA and then process the rest with, with Gate. Um, wh why not? Um, again, the document representation is simple but, um, by, by design, I would say. It's again, it's in order not to make too many assumptions as to why and how people would, would use that for. And, and the feature names, again, again are, are strings, and some people might object that it's it's a limitation. doesn't mean it will be like this all the time. It can evolve over time. But again, I think that for, for quite a few applications, that, that's enough. It wor works fine like this. Um, one interesting aspect that we, we, um, we gain from um, being based on, on Hadoop is that uh, we, we can, you know, we could connect annotators which are not necessarily in, in Java. And that, that's quite important because in NLP there, are, there, there is a large amount of legacy components which are in C++ or, or whatever. And some of them are quite popular. And um, so that would be a nice way of you know, using Behemoth as well as to, to connect to these um, annotators in, in a different language. Um, the only thing is that for that we need to have a C++ implementation of you know, that Behemoth document. But we could use Avro for serialization. That could probably help. Um, and the other aspect is that whatever we do with the, um, the actual uh, Gate or Yuma or even any other NLP framework that we, we could plug uh, onto that, is that we can then use MapReduce to do things uh, in a scalable way with the post-processing, with the way we, we you know, use the annotations. Um, so in the typical, I think I should speed up a little bit. Um, so a typical workflow, uh, you would push the, um, the input process into um, HDFS, and, and currently we support a number of, um, of uh, input formats, so um, um, web archives, um, nudge segments, and uh, all standard files, so we push everything into HDFS. Uh, you can then convert from these original formats into the behemoth document format, uh, and for that we use um, Tika to identify the MIME types and extract the text and do and extract the metadata. Um, and it generates a sequence file. And that and, and the sequence file is you know, the unit on which we'll then operate. Then we, we need to push the um the gate and UEMA resources onto HDFS. Um so the you know UEMA has a, a format called pair, so it's basically a zip with you know all the resources, the configuration, whatever we need. And there is a similar um thing in, in gates, and basically we put that onto HDFS. And the reason why we do that is that um, we use the distributed cache for sending the, um, the, the resources onto the, to the, to the slaves, which means we need to run MapReduce in a distributed or pseudo-distributed mode. Um, and then, yeah, we, we have a number of um, UEMA, well, we have a UEMA and a gate job, and basically we process the, uh, the, the sequence file, and that generates another sequence file with, again, text as a some stack text as a key, typically a URL or any other ad identifier for a document, and again, uh, a serialized behemoth document. Um, yeah, Post-processing, I've already mentioned that. We can do whatever we want with MapReduce. Um, and we can also do things differently. Again, the, the UMind gate jobs are more illustrations on, on you know, of what people could do, how you, you, could, you could do things. But uh, each component is, you know, the is quite um, clearly separated. So you could reuse, for instance, inside a, a single map step, you could co combine several, say, a, a UEMA processing with a gate processing with TCA before that, or so you can mix and match, if you speak. Um, and, and some of the examples in, in the sandbox will, will probably um, illustrate that. Um, speaking of which, um, so the sandbox is about um, yeah, reusing uh, the, the um, Thanks. Core components um, extending with new uh, functionalities with you know, by providing new implementations of MapReduce, um, federating as well in the sense that once we've produced the annotations with um, Gate, Wema, OpenNLP, whatever you want, then you can you can you know, leverage that and work on that regardless of how it's been produced in the first place, um, and of course share so 
contributing the, the code and because I expect people will probably well have several uh, needs which are can be in common so it's about yeah, sharing and, and improving things um, there is currently one uh, resource in in, in, the, um, in the sandbox which is more probably more of an illustration but but I found it useful myself um, and, it, and it's basically a, a component which sends documents to a solar for you know, indexing it um, and it uses named entities like we've seen pers person location and everything um, which can be used for um, for faceting in for instance in solar or used in any way you want then it's just a field in a solar document you can facet or, 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 or not and that takes a, a pre-annotated sequence file of, of um, behemoth documents So now, um, what are the, the plans for the shorter, medium terms? term? Th there are several things. Um, one thing uh, I, I'm planning to, to have a look at is cascading, because in a way, the, um, I suppose some of you are familiar with it. Um, the, the model fits well with some of the things that, that you know, we, we, um, we do in, in Behemoth. Um, you know, there is a for instance, a, a pipe, yeah, it's a behemoth annotator or behemoth components. That could be a good fit. Uh, I'm not too sure. I'm um, I'm not too keen on the license, to be honest. So something that uh, you know, would need, uh, I would need to look at. Um, there will be more uh, examples in the in the sandbox, uh, and one which will definitely be um, be added soon is um, um, a component for for Mahout, which is about you know, doing machine learning with on um, on MapReduce. Uh, so that we could generate vectors representing the, the behemoth documents, and then we could do that for doing you know, document clustering, classification, or whatever. Um, in, in general, I would say the, the aim of, of behemoth is not to invent the wheel, but just to, to facilitate things, uh, hide the, the ugly details, be able to scale, and also to, uh, to be able to, to connect to other resources like Mahout or, or Solar easily. Of course, better documentation, pretty pictures, tests, etc. And uh, I have just two minutes, so, so I'll be very quick. Um, yeah, one thing I, I really want to have a look at is how we could um, use Avro for, for the serialization and, and how that could facilitate the, um, the integration of resources which are not in Java. Um, one thing which I find a bit of a pain is to, at the moment, we, we generate several, you know, every time we generate a new sequence file, so after a few rounds, you have quite a few sequence files, it's a bit, it's a bit messy. Um, and using something, the initial plan was to use something like HBase. You have you know, connect to a table and just operate on, on the table and just update the values in the table, and that's it. Um, and I have very little time left, but just enough to tell you a bit about Gora, uh, which we could use as a replacement for um, well, HBase directly. Um, so Gora is something that we are, which is currently being developed um, as part of um, Nudge, well, what will become Nudge 2.0, which is currently called Nudge Base. Uh, it lives on, on, on GitHub, and, and the idea is basically to have, it's a bit off topic compared to Behemoth, but never mind, um, is to have an ORM, ORM framework for um, NoSQL, basically. Because in, in Nudge, we, we don't necessarily want to be, to be tied to um, a, a specific flavor of NoSQL. And also in Nudge, we have people who um, are interested in using it just on, on very, very small, on very, very small scale. Um, and as the, the previous speaker mentioned, why well, if, you, if you're operating just on a few thousands or uh, uh, entries, then you might as well just use um, MySQL or, or because you know, people are familiar with that. And, and that's what Gora will allow us to do is just to take, you know, simplify, well, have a sort of kind of common facet for all these things. So in the background, you know, the storage, w we already have storage for, for HBase or, or, or memory-based storage. We are working on the SQL storage or Cassandra in 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 the, in the medium term, a Cassandra storage, and the idea is that from from a, a client point of view, um, you know, we we, are, we use things in the same way. There is a um, you know, very simple atomic operation like put and get. We can um, we have some um, input for well inputs for um, MapReduce, so you can run MapReduce on top of Gora, and and then you don't have to. You know, worry about you know, how it, it, it's uh, obtained from the underlying storage. You can, yeah, that's a way of using MapReduce on top of um, MySQL, for instance. Um, yeah, so it's a, a project in, uh, which is, yeah, quite still very better, but uh, probably worth having a look if you are you know, into uh, NoSQL and that type of stuff. Um, yeah, so basically um, what I was trying to um, 
show in my talks that, to, to, again, to bounce back on the, the previous talks, that there is there are tools for doing intelligence well, and and add you know, create um, new interesting things and using data in a new way, while at the same time being able to do that on a large scale. So there are mature projects which we or NLP resources that we we can we can use for that. Um, and and Behemoth, yeah, aims at, at doing that, just um, working with you know coming coming input formats, wrapping these things for you and. Um, be a sort of playground for for people to uh, to experiment with text processing. So yeah, please give it a try. Get involved, um, and that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, if you want to uh, to go outside for coffees, and if you have questions, yeah, we can we can have a chat in front of a coffee.